Buying a car that has been abandoned like this 1995 Toyota Hilux Surf is terrifying. The most terrifying part of it is the fear of the unknown. The unknown involves the history of the car, maintenance records, how much it will cost once the rebuild is complete, and most importantly, what is actually wrong with the car. In the last couple of videos, you would have seen that we got this absolute clap box running and driving, which is a huge step in the right direction. However, there's an old saying, two steps forward, one step back, and that is exactly what we have encountered with this particular car. When buying an abandoned barn find like this thing right here, it's super important to make sure that you're still in the green by the end of the build. Obviously, it's a complete gamble. You never know. It could be a lemon or it could be a complete W. It's a matter of diving in and finding out the outcome. With this car, it seemed like a massive W. It seemed like we profited super hard. We only paid $1,236 for this car. There's cars in slightly better condition listed for like 10 k on car sales and marketplace. In the last video, you would have seen that we actually drove this car for the very first time in our possession and actually it didn't quite go to plan in saying that in today's video we're going to be diving deep into this 1kz te and trying to find out why is this thing smoking so much i'm praying that it's something simple but i've got a little bit of a bad feeling about this one as i mentioned in the last video it could be one of or all of three things injectors turbo or low on compression here she is the dirty stinky kz 130. The 1KZTE is a relatively bulletproof engine with heat management being one of the only major killers. Because of this, I decided that the first part that I should inspect is the turbo. The turbo on this car is located in a bit of a difficult spot and is surrounded by heaps of accessories, making it difficult to work on. I begun by taking off an airbox pipe that goes to the front of the turbo. By doing this, I was able to feel if this part of the turbo was oily and it somehow worked out to be completely dry. For for some unknown reason, I then thought I'd start the car, let it warm up a bit and give it a few revs to see if new oil would appear on that intake pipe. Alright, that front bit of piping is off. I'm going to put my fingers in now and see if they come out all oily. I don't know whether I should be expecting it to be all black because of carbon. I'm going to be trying to feel like oily residue that indicate that the turbo seals might be gone. We're going in. Let's go. It definitely feels oily, so the turbo might be cooked. Actually removing the turbo doesn't seem to be awfully difficult. The dump pipe bolts are kinda accessible and the coolant feed and return lines are super easy to get to. The first step was taking the crossover pipe off the turbo outlet. On my car, it was just a simple hose clamp which was easy to get to. Once the hose clamp is undone, I needed to take off the four bolts that hold the crossover pipe to the intake side. I however had three bolts because one of the previous owners snapped it. There were also two bolts that held the throttle cable assembly onto the crossover pipe. These came out easy and now the crossover pipe was off the car. I just pulled this intake throttle body pipe off. The pipe runs across on top of the engine and to the turbo. When I pulled it off and what I just showed in the last clip was that everything is coated in oil. This could be an indication that the turbo seals are absolutely flogged out. Another thing that we found is that one of these bolt holders had actually snapped off. To be honest, I'm not really surprised. The car's been mistreated and abused. And also, if you've ever worked on a rocker cover of a 1JZ or a 2JZ, they tend to do the exact same thing. What I'm going to do is just find a bigger washer that comes out here and then put the stud back through it and it should be mint. Another thing is that it's a good time to change the rocker cover gasket. That taking off that crossover pipe means that we're now able to take off the rocker cover to replace the gasket because it is absolutely pissing out oil all over here. When doing a job that involves many crusty old bolts on an old crusty car, fluids like this rust breaker or WD-40 are your best friend. I sprayed the rust breaker all over the manifold bolts and let it sit for a little bit to ensure it penetrates through the rust. This ensures that I won't be snapping any studs today. I also sprayed some on the dump pipe because I read that the bolts that hold it onto the turbo housing are known for snapping. The turbo on these 1KZ TE motors are designed to be taken off with the exhaust manifold. I begun taking off the manifold bolts one by one and everything so far was going super smoothly.
I just managed to crack all the nuts that hold the manifold onto the engine. I was freaking out that they were going to be rusted together and super tight. However, I feel like one of the previous owners has had a play around in there and everything was actually quite loose. I also noticed that one of the studs was snapped and were actually missing a bolt. However, it did look like the manifold was still pressed up against the engine, but that is something that I'm going to need to look into replacing. The next thing I need to do here is to try and play around with all of these oil feed and return coolant feed and return lines to take them off in the least intrusive way possible. Disconnecting the coolant feed and return lines can be daunting on some cars, but on this one, it's not too bad. To do this job, all I needed was some pliers to take off the hose clamps, a screwdriver to pry on the hoses, and a bucket to collect the coolant when it starts to leak out. If I was to go back in time, I would definitely use some sort of penetrant or lube. The oil and feed lines to the turbo are actually really easy to take off. One thing I really like about this car is the fact that there is actually quite a bit of room to do stuff in the engine bay. Like if you were doing this on like an XR5 turbo focus, it would be extremely enraging. But over here, having a pretty good time. The thing that worries me most about taking this turbo off is getting to the bolts that hold the dump pipe on. For one of the bolts, you have to use this window here. And then because I feel like someone snapped one of the studs on this car, I have to get someone to go under the car and hold one side and then I'll go from the top here and crack loose another one. Ah, oh, this is going to be a lot of work. Even though it was a lot of work, I was keen to keep going. To start off, I used the access hole in the wheel well to remove one of the nuts from the dump pipe. Zach and I then made a system where I lie under the car and hold the nut while he loosens the bolt from the engine bay. I couldn't access the third bolt from the top so I made a super long extension out of many tool kits and I was able to reach and undo it from underneath the vehicle. Zach and I just managed to take the dump pipe off and it was actually quite a difficult task. The reason why it was so difficult is because all the bolts were so rusted and so seized. The good thing is, is that it doesn't seem like any of them broke or were stripped or cross threaded. So that means that we're not going to have too much of a terrible time connecting the dump pipe back onto the new turbo. Now that that's done, we can move on to undoing the rest of the accessories and pull the turbo out. The next challenge we faced was undoing the EGR pipe that goes on the back of the manifold. It is a really uncomfortable place and you can only fit a spanner in there. It looks like someone has stripped it in the past so I knew I was going to have an awful time trying to take it off. I've honestly been having the worst time trying to get this manifold off. Last time I felt the bolt it felt like it was about to strip. I guess I'm gonna try. This is not fun. While trying to remove these bolts I actually made the one that was stripped a lot worse. In hindsight I should have used a spanner that was six-sided rather than 12 but I'm here learning along the way. Due to this it left us with no option but to take the turbo off without the manifold. Zach and I were just throwing as hard as we can. So the manifold is loose, the turbo is loose. It took us literally an hour to get this one bolt out of the back of the rear housing. It bolts the rear housing onto the downpipe. I just spent the last probably hour and a half trying to pull the turbo off and it's finally out here. There it is. Terrible. I had to leave the manifold on despite taking all the bolts out because of that one EGR pipe at the back that's stripped out. Now came the part that we've been waiting for and that is stripping down the turbo so I could inspect for shaft play. Firstly, I had to remove the pipe that goes between the downpipe and the rear housing. All of the bolts were rusted together so they required a bit of a whack to take off. After that was done, I could see if there was shaft play in the exhaust wheel. I then moved on to taking off the 90 degree bend that came off the compressor housing on the turbo. Once again, like everything else on this car, the bolts were rusted together, making it a pain to undo. But once we got them off, we could inspect the shaft plate in the compressor wheel. As you guys just saw, I took two pipes off the turbo. The front one was like a bracket that went into the air intake and the back one goes down to the downpipe and then through to the exhaust. I grabbed the wheels in the turbo and checked for shaft play and oddly enough, they literally had like no shaft play. Another thing is that this turbo is not the factory Toyota turbo. CT12B, these kits are pretty cheap. They're about two, 300 bucks. I think the oil seals are done. That's why everything was coated in oil. Weird that it has no shaft play. Actually kind of 
disappointed that it doesn't have shelf life. Well, there you have it, guys. This is the first step to us finding out what's actually wrong with this Hilux Sir. If you made it this far in the video, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate all the support and I read and reply to every single one of your comments. Currently, the surf is at a little bit of a standstill because I'm waiting for the new turbo to arrive. However, there is something exciting. I've actually gone to pick up a new car today and that video will be up next week. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope to see all of you in the next video. Peace out. See you later. Yes.